like to read all of your reactions to the great buying stories uh, this morning. I've been joined by James Silas. Yeah, good morning, Lagos. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Omas. Um, how are you doing, Omas? It's been a minute. I've not seen you for like one month. Ah, uh, that is really no, James. Oh, Silas, that just, was before just, the Grammys, but I see you still. Joking. I still see you have uh, the leftover of the Valentine's on you already. Still red for you. Yeah, I, honestly, as you just said this, thing, I just clicked. I tried <laughs> very much not to wait. <laughs> that still is red. <laughs> but hey, love is love, bro. Okay, so let's yeah. begin with the stories. We've got a quite very interesting stories to pick up uh, this morning, and uh, let's go over to, well. OBO is the one they call the OO one of the 30 BGs gang. And right now is in news for some issues uh, by an agent of his. It said that a fan was hit while trying to get uh, probably a selfie, a photo with uh, the video, punched in an attempt to get him off. Is that going too far when the fans are the one who make this artist? You know, sometimes when these things or when these situations arises um, um or when the situations arise people just think that oh it, won't, it may not count or it doesn't matter or i mean i, I believe that the aid um would, would have assumed that he was doing his job for say uh but sometimes when you're even while executing your duty as maybe a bodyguard or you know whatever it is you have to also add common sense to how you apply it i feel like he went too far by smacking that guy um, I can understand how some fans can be very stubborn when they say, don't come this way, don't come close, or don't, mm. you know, and you still insist and you still want to cross that line. Do you understand? But I don't think the response should have been smacking him that way. Do you understand? It may have been taking away, like pushing away from your, just keep protecting your, 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 you know, your concern, your primary concern. I just feel like sometimes when um, there's, there's a trend, so to speak. I mean, do you remember when people were, uh, reenacting that whole um kiss daniel's bodyguard one particular uh, you know clip that we saw and people were, it was funny that one everybody was reacting or you, know, you know playing along with it but truthfully um this guy didn't need to smack that guy the way he smacked him and i'm sure he didn't think that was going to be caught on camera the way you know it now went viral so i feel like you should have at least just applied common sense and just at least control yourself you can't be emotional in a situation like that, you can just not be emotional. I don't know when exactly that thing happened. I don't know if it was right around after this guy came back from the Grammys and everybody was just pissed and stuff, and then just thought that, hey, anybody that comes close will collect. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he, he overreacted, and I, you know, I, I don't think we should encourage that in, in no shape or form. It's just way out of line. I mean, the truth is that if we were in a proper uh, society, I don't know where that thing happened. Like I said, like I said earlier. But you can be sued, and you guys will pay from your, you know, from the depth of your pockets for for that for that smack. James, I was just going to let it part, but if you say we're in a proper society, sometimes I mean, I mean no, I said not, if we, we, we are not in a stone society. age, I mean, no, I no, but the, he has got the way with it. If, if this happened in Nigeria, he has got the way with it. He has smacked him, and nothing. He's just trending on social media, and it's funny to everybody, to some people, and but of course, people were condemning it. But it could have gone way beyond just people reacting on social media. You would have been arrested or sued. You would pay. Like the guy will pay. Whoever that needs to pay, if it's um, it, it, it would, I don't know, man. You you you'll be sued for it. You pay for it. You can't get away. You cannot smack somebody like that and think that it's okay and business as usual. No, you pay for it. It, it is often said that a man or a woman may be sent on the on an errand of a slave, but it is your duty when you get there to deliver that message. Or do that job like a freeborn when you get to where you are supposed to do it. So I guess that's a summary of what you're you're trying to get across. But absolutely, could you also set a, a template for fans if they are listening right now? What should the approach be? I see an, an idol. I see someone who I idolize a great deal. Is, is there a protocol to go about it to get a photograph? Can you speak or just guide us through so I we mean, can avoid things like basically this? what you are supposed to do. Do you understand? You can approach, not too close. You can't just run towards the guy because nobody knows if you are an intruder, if you are, you know, if you are armed, if you are dangerous to um, the celebrity or the subject that is being protected. That's understandable. You can't just rush towards the person like that, and because we don't know you, do you understand? Like, like I said, I still maintain that I don't know what environment that 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 thing happened. But now, one is you at least walk around, try to even from a distance. 
you know, signal to get the attention of the celebrity and say, sir, you know, from a distance and say, I want to take a picture with you. The guy can see you and then beckon to you to come closer. But you cannot run towards the person and just go. And some sometimes you don't even know these guys can be the celebrities too. They get in the they are humans, they get they are in a bad mood. They are not in the mood to even talk to people, other people, they are not in the mood to, you know. Plus, experiences also would have taught them that look, don't let people come close to you. Sometimes they come close, they steal their stuff, they jack their chain, and all those things. It has happened. I understand. But what you can do as a celebrity, as 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 a, a fan, so to speak, is from a distance signal and say, "Sir, please, can I take a picture?" Or get to talk to one of his aides who is not as close or too close to him and say, "Sir, please, I'd like to take a picture with this picture, you know, with David or with this celebrity." And then they can create an audience for you and so that you can do it. But outside that, you just can't rush into a situation and just say because you're a fan, you have your camera rolling, you want to come on. It's not going to happen. I mean, I see another one. There was one I saw earlier. Um, it was. Whiskey, even though that one looked like it was it was a joke or the way it was, it was supposed to be funny, but the guy just pulled out his camera when Whiskey was walking and came in front of him and was recording. And Whiskey smacked his head, you know, just slapped the back of his head. It was funny, do you understand? Mm -hmm. But still, you know, you have to be careful when you are around these people. You don't know how, what mood they are in at that point in time. You just can't rush in because you are a fan or because you, you whatever you say you are, and they just think that you can go in front of somebody and start flicking your, your camera. No, it doesn't. You shouldn't do that. But still, it doesn't make it right for you to, you know, smack a guy for even attempting it. Okay. So this leads us to our next item. And again, celebrities, we we have expectations of them, what they should be. Sometimes we forget they are also human. They can make mistakes. We also want our celebrities or our sports figures in a way to be up there. They should never fail. So this leads yeah. us to this point to, to where you want to say even celebrities too, they're human being like us. So it, it comes across as the solidarity is now building up for Alex Iwobi of the Super Eagles fresh from AFCON and issues after the loss to co divine the final. There's been this cyber bullying going on. Teammates have been speaking up, but it seems uh, entertainers, Falls, AY, Markun, uh, they're up to it and saying, look, it has to stop. Let's draw the line. Yes, I mean... Uh, I don't know. So, so I don't know. I, I'm still struggling to understand why people were dragging the movie. Really, and it makes me question uh, my concentration when I was watching the, watching the match. Like, what exactly did the movie do again? That's why I kept asking myself, like, why are people talking? Why are people, you know, dragging him? Um. So yes, whether it will be um, whether whoever it is that you know, um, whoever the celebrity is, we've had situations where people are were dragging. I remember when and this guy's own happened in Yakubu. Um, yeah, Igbeni. Uh, I don't know if that guy is still on Twitter or uh, now X. I don't know where, what exactly, how he would have felt at that time. And this happens a lot of times. Sometimes even, you know, for no reason, unprovoked, you know. Um, I saw some media people or journalists were trying to even interview him. I saw a video where they were trying to interview him. He weaved and didn't do that interview. Same with... Um, What's his name? Isime. They just avoided the. I mean, I, I, we understand that um, everybody wanted us to win. Everybody wanted Super Eagles to win. It was a moment where we just feel like, come on, we were supposed to win, but now we didn't win. And then people now decide to take it out on the players. Why? If we didn't make it to the finals, would anybody have passed on or died? No. Why do you now feel like for even making it to the final? Do you know how? What, what was last time we got? We made it to this. Made it this far, and then we now bring everything by insulting by come on man even to threaten his life too it's just not it's not right you know and i understand I, of course it, it was only proper the truth is some people some even you know would have said something bad at one point or the other but later realized that wait this does not make sense we shouldn't be doing this you know um it's just what it is it happens you see the social media field this whole social media thing it's an open field for anything. People can do whatever they want to do. They just see it as an avenue. Once you have data and you, you're, you just, they just, no no space of filtering or even, you know, any logical reasoning. They just go back, 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 and they throw it out there. Bam. And you don't know how much manage, um, damage your words can actually cause to other people. It's, it's, it's not fair. It's, and I believe that maybe what we did not even see a lot of those ones that, and that happened on social media. It's probably the ones that people said to him, maybe on the road or whatever. 
Do you understand? Because I don't know why you want to sit down. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think if me, if I was, it would be, I, wouldn't, I wasn't going to sit on social media to be reading the things that people were saying about me. It's but of course, all, all of his photos on, on Instagram. Exactly. Because people were commenting. I'm sure his phone, he would have seen like so many comments and even trying to even look and he would have seen a little insult. Mm. It's not fair. I think people should just, I know, but I think by now he should be chilling now. They should have left him. Nobody should be dragging him anymore. But again, let's let's leave that. Let's look at ourselves as Nigerians quickly. Yeah. And we also and most of the persons, the way we, we drag other countries, we, we we tend to call cyberbullying what we we give it another name as dragging. Let's call it what it is. When we the way we even get across to our neighbors in after football games and other events, like is it time we put a stop and a limit to some of those things? Because it is an extension of what we are seeing. Absolutely. You know the funny thing about social media? Social media looks for easy way, the easy way out. And it's collective, you know. Everybody, uh, who brought about that word, dragging? Who, how did that word mm -hmm. come into play? Dragging, it, it sounds like a fun word, you know. I say, ah, we'll drag you out, drag you out. You know, but it's actually cyberbullying. It's, it's what it is. And which is why, um, you know, people keep calling for, and of course, people don't, even the social media don't want to hear this. That they, they ask the government or the authorities to, uh, what's the word to control or to um, there's a word I was look, I'm looking for regulation is that a word? regulate yes to regulate the whole social media activity you know control if if you are even with the owners if there are certain words that you might have to use and they you know sort of cut you off or suspend your account for a minute and stuff and. Just maybe, but uh, it, look, but, but social do you media. See, do you see these as having gone beyond what it used to be when Dorsey was around in charge of 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 now X, formerly Twitter? Now it's like it's gone way out of control because Elon Musk is in charge and he's in because an Elon, apostle Elon of Musk free speech. It's also an apostle of free speech, not just free speech, bro. The things I see on this X app these days. Shocked, I'll be I'll be shocked. Uh I mean, just to put it in a light way, a lot of things that you normally will not see. Like if you go on tweet on Instagram, for instance, if you post anything that no matter how little when it, it comes to um, nudity, even the word itself, you know, you cannot just type sex on, on Instagram and think that it will fly. It will not fly. There are a lot of words, even all the cuss words and stuff that are controlled and managed on Instagram that you cannot see. Or you cannot type on Instagram, but if you go to the X app right now, mm -hmm. because the visuals of it, videos, pictures, nudity, everything is going on on that app, and I do not know. I don't. I will never understand why. I will never understand how it should be. This is cool. I do. I can never understand it, and I can also understand why um, the Thread app did not um, do as good as we thought it would have done, even with the way people rushed to it. The initial, the initial, um, you know, month or time that it was it was it was um, launched, you know. But you see that X app. This that's why people can say whatever they want to say. They throw the words recklessly, and nothing happens. But yes, I believe that these are the reasons why some platforms or some countries want to regulate um, these kind of platforms, you know, and control the way people. It's not because they don't want you to speak. Not because not out of them, um, you know, to to choke you from. Um, freedom of speech or whatever, but because of the things that people say, I remember one time that it even happened in Nigeria where they banned the, the, the app in Nigeria. People were, you could not do anything that like, you were sad. Some people were sad, literally sad. Some people were unhappy. Some people were, do you understand? Yeah. So imagine if that is brought back again, if they do that to you again over and over, and then maybe just maybe you start behaving yourself when you're on that platform. All right, there is a republic known as X. You know where you get on that street. Just make sure you look left, right, back, and just watch for your sanity. It's still the grapevine on Smooth 98.1 FM. More still coming. We've got Timmy Dacolo still here for some issues. And then also there is still some feels. The producer, Tom Singer, is also in the mix. Stay tuned.
Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. It is still the great vinyl on smooth 98.1 FM. James Silas, is this still Yeah, here? I'm right here. All right. James, before we dig into some more entertainment story, the messages are in here. Right? So let's throw them in and then we get on to some more stories. Right. Uh, Tayo has been listening and then he's following and he goes on reacting to one of the stories that's about um, Davido, the bouncer and the fan getting slapped. No grief for anybody. After Dave Chappelle <laughs> incident, legal steps against assault is now dicey. He can file a police report against the bouncer, but things are the way they are. That's mm. what Thayo has to say. Chris from Ajao's thought is what I'm looking at from Ajao Estate says, fans should learn self-control and self-esteem over idolizing celebrities makes them seem see themselves as demigods. Now hustle everybody hustle. That's mm. what he has to say. So just hustle. You two can also get to that level and then that's it. Have some pride now. Ali, I'm looking at your thoughts here. It says, uh, I wonder why Mercy, Ronaldo, and the rest of their international footballers managed to handle dragging on social media. If these ones don't want to be scolded by all for their imperfection, it is like, yes, we can make mistakes, but don't call us out. Uh, they have been showered with gifts, but they don't want to be reprimanded. Please. That's what Ali has to say. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ali. Uh, Ajibade's thoughts here says, well, we can eat our cake and have it. We have an advocate of free speech and thinks it doesn't come at a price. So there's a price for everything. And that's what he has to say. So let's touch base with uh, the man who has a voice and a song who some persons will say, well, if in case someday we need a second anthem to be promoted as a national anthem, but it is quite a lengthy one and you must have a voice to drag it. But let's go and touch base with Timmy Dakolo, who sings with a passion and he says, everything you put your hand would work. But it takes us into his childhood in this interview with um, uh, T with um, Tay in the podcast. And he speaks about how he grew up with his uh, grandmother and Talk to us about how this would pan out. Yeah, I mean, um, for for Timmy, what's the core of this particular conversation is that he was raised by his grandparents because his parents had him when he was when they were really really young. I mean, he didn't really say how old the parents were. Um, I mean, from the reports, the, the funny thing is that I kept saying I, I was going to watch that thing myself, but I haven't watched because I'm a fan of. Um, TVT and Timmy Sands um, podcast. I watch, I watch, I probably watch everything that's been putting out from day one. 
But this particular one, I just keep looking at it and say, okay, I'll come back to it, I'll come back to it. I haven't watched it. So, but um, he didn't really say how old the parents were when they had him. But with the way he described it, you can tell that they were maybe probably teenagers when they had him and um, the parents had, the grandparents had to take care of or raise him specifically. And it's um, not spectacular to him. It's not unique to him. It happens in a lot of occasions or in a lot of cases that when um, people, you know, when young people um, bring a child to the world, they literally know nothing about raising, you know, a child. And many times the grandparents would step in and take care of that child to they get to you know matured age, it has happened a lot, or it happens a lot, especially in, not just in this side of um, the world um, in Africa, all around, everywhere. Even um, MTV has a show called uh, Teen Moms, you know. So it it just happens, you know, that um, they will take care of your child for you at the end of the day. So and I'm sure when you go back, when you look at Timmy Dakolo today, um, and how far he has come for himself, you know. It's only proper that he just goes back sometimes to reminisce and relive those days and how he was actually. And you see that he did not turn out badly at all because he was raised by people who have experience about raising, you know, do you understand, raising children. And he's done well for himself so far. And I believe that, and of course, he's not, he has not in his own case repeated the same situation that his parents, you know, are coming from. Yeah, but um, shout out to him for telling the story. I, I like how you sum this up in a way. Look, looking at Dakol, he's a father now of uh, more than two now, and yes, his union is stable. But there is a Ghanaian plot in that story. It talks about yeah. so you can see he says that I think the father had to go return back to Ghana as a result of that. But you also alluded to something in the story where you talked about how most societies have this provision. But there's something unique about Africa: the extended family factor that comes yes. into to rescue a situation but in the west you would go to a child is born and then sent to welfare and then you can't compare that to the the warmth you get from extended family absolutely so it depends also depends on the environment and how um, the situation was managed in the first place the truth is that here in nigeria as well those things happen you understand we still have like the government can if a child is abandoned or whatever the you know um the government can take over do you understand? So even there, the children are just not just taken to um, welfare. They are just, just not just jumped there. I mean, they always check out situations, the you know, circumstances surrounding the welfare of that child to see if there's family that can take care of that child. But if nobody's coming, I mean, even your own your own child, you as a parent, your own child, if you not, if the child goes to school and complain about certain things or complain about certain things, they will call welfare. And with the welfare, the government can actually take your child from you. So it depends on the circumstance surrounding the upbringing of that child, you know. So like I said, it happens even here if um, a child is abandoned. I mean, well, it's just that, oh, I don't, let's, let, let me just leave it. Let's not go into details. Well, it's just a summary. It's just saying that it's often said in Africa that a child who's neglected by society or the community, most often than not, will burn it down to feel the warmth of that society. But Absolutely. Thankfully, you you can see that. That's why it's very important to reach out to children like this. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go over to Phil's issue. This is Phil's the producer. How is it easy to transit from being a producer, churning out great mixes, to now putting his voice to music? And not just this, this collabo is something. Now, he talks about his collaboration with Usher. Usher of the Super Bowl fame. This is <laughs> what we are talking about. It says, it was a dream come true. Absolutely, it has to be a dream. Uh -uh. Why not? You know, <laughs> he produced that song and also yeah. featured in the, in the record. You know, um. So, but generally, which it does not, it does not happen easily. Um, I think those kind of kind of uh, collaborations happen around the distribute the, the distribution company of the record labels, the international record labels, who may share ties with both or maybe manage both artists. Do you understand? So sometimes these things can happen seamlessly you know with, even without too much effort you know it's not it's sometimes I, I mean i've not heard him tell the story proper about how yeah. this collaboration happened um i'm sure it, this situation was not sending a dm kind of um, um collaboration do you understand so but i think it was properly and um, structured and to happen but look shout out to him and when it comes to producers going to or becoming mainstream or front the front um front row artists it's not particularly an easy fit a lot of producers have tried 
even before now. And we can count the producers that have done it successfully. Oh, I mean, there's this people. guy who comes in, Rara, this Young song. John. Techno. Who? Techno. Techno. Yeah. Young John. But Techno was, Techno is a producer as well. Yeah. But Techno, yeah, he started as a producer, but on the mainstream, uh, when it comes to um, the mainstream um, Techno, it, it was an artist. Do you understand? We, we He started as an artist to us, to a lot of people. We didn't know him as a producer when he started. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, he was. He could produce. Yes, he was a producer, or he, or he still produces. But he didn't come to the mainstream, or he didn't hit mainstream as a producer. So, but we had known the likes of Fields, Young John, way back as producers. You know, um, Young John was producing. Is, for... is Young John still wicked as we speak right now? Is this still wicked? Absolutely, right? he's still wicked, right? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> he's still Young John, the wicked producer. However. <laughs> Now you have to just see him as the singer. Okay. You understand? I don't even know if he still produces for himself. Do you understand? Okay. But it's what it is. Those ones were known as producers and they became popular as producers before they now, you know, sort of however they did it was fantastic. And of course, if you are going to switch from being a producer to become an actual artist, you have to come correct. And that's exactly what they did, which is why they become accepted. And um now they are you just see them as I mean, for someone like me, it's still. I'm still in between, like, oh, oh you know. Okay. But look, and what, how I feel like, I feel like that, especially when it comes to when you see them performing on stage, when you see them going around the stage and singing, and you're like, wow, wow, okay, okay. Do okay. you understand? But it doesn't take away the fact that I always say that creatives, if you're a creative, if you're a talented person in any field, especially when it comes to um, the entertainment sector, you can transform. In, look, don't be surprised if tomorrow you hear me. You see my music video. Hey. Music video. Uh -huh. okay. Creatives can do Look anything. Out for that. Trans I'm telling you, they can transform, they can do anything. And it's just what it is. But it's looking like Nigerian acts are like the hot cake in the industry right now. See the collabs we're having. Uh, we're talking about off air the other time. How have you seen uh, young Zazu? Now, nah, come on. What's it? Portable. Portable. It's on yes. Skepta. And you see the collab, mm -hmm. the kind of is walking towards also. So Nigerians are making big collaborative move across the world. I mean, we've been doing that like since the time of before slice Super Baba, right? Super Baba and White Left, um, yes. Do you understand? Billy Square. Yes. Been, do you understand? We've been doing that. You know, there's one guy called Reed, um, something Reed, that had a song with Indispensables from Portacode back in the day, like. We we've been doing that whole collaboration thing. We've been knocking that out. Just, it's our work. Yeah, yeah, do you understand? Yeah. It's our work. So what one of the things that's happened now is that even while we we're doing it at that time, the record was not distributed as far as mm -hmm. those other artists were from. But these days, people are the collaborations are landing on the tables of the fans of Selena Gomez in America and around the world. The same way it's landing to the fans of Rema here. In Lagos or and in Nigeria, do you understand? So it's more global. I mean, look at um Burner Boy performed at the Grammys with Brandy. Brandy. Do you understand? Brandy wasn't in the studio for the original record. I'm sure they just used to the interpolation of the do you understand to record um Burner Boy's part. But this time around that the Grammys doing this performance, voila, we had Brandy side by side. In, flesh, in flesh and blood. Do you understand? Yeah. So it's as cool as that these days. That's what it is. It, I cannot even comment anything less. We, which we are international, you know. We're global now. We're global. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Take <laughs> me to this one now. So let's see. Katy Perry is now looking like uh, she's walking out on the American uh, Idol show. What could be the reason? Pay? Maybe she's got tired. Okay. So details of this particular her living, I, I'm still sketchy to me personally because okay. I've not really taken time to dig proper to see why she's living but um over the years we've had it i mean situations where people or uh, some of these people get to leave the shows and uh, move on to other things other concerns perhaps she's just tired perhaps sometimes it might be pay it might be you know but i just feel like it's okay it's, it shouldn't be a problem it shouldn't be um an issue if somebody has decided to now move on to other other businesses. Do you understand? Because she's done that thing for how many years? For a very long time. She's been there for what? So it's okay if she wants to move on to other concerns or to other businesses. And um, I think they will look for a replacement. I don't know if they have a replacement already, but you just have to put somebody to carry on from where she, she stopped. But I mean, she had a good run. And um, yeah. 
and she didn't roar about it. So it's time maybe we get to hear her roar <laughs> next time and do what we know Cathy does best. And so <laughs> it is a problem. It is a problem. I'm sure um, she probably will speak up later. Uh, I mean, I remember what's his name, Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon had they had she, I think he wanted more money or something, and they said they couldn't. And he left them. You know, he left. He he resigned and went on to, you know, to start his own and uh, wild, wild in, wild, um, what's it called? Um, out, wild and out, out and wild, something like, well, he went and started his own show, and, which has become global as well, successful in, in his own right. So, yeah, it happens. James, this is how far we can come today with the stories inside the grapevine, all entertainment, and it's always fun every time I've got you in here. But let's uh, pick Absolutely. up a few, a few messages that are waiting for us. I've got Gabe's message waiting, and he says... Um, Alex Iwobi didn't play well. People should obviously express their views considering how people handle emotions, <laughs> hate speech, and bullying is expected. X is different from other social media app. It is mostly unfiltered. But if you post, if your post is reported properly, your account could be banned. Iwobi should uh, just apologize and move on. It's not even got <laughs> it. It's not wow, even got okay. it as much backlash as Yakubu Ayegbeni. So what is he crying about? Have they touched him yet? You know how you how ah. people all that spy and they ask you, have I have I even touched you? I like you'll be crying and say no you have not <laughs> you calm <come> down. <laughs> I never touched you. Come on. No no Perfect. so the entire message here says a final message tire and that joint artists are evolving. It's like the parable of talent in just a little while, James Silas, after guest appearing in the grapevine, will be challenging P Square Cafe to a dance. <laughs> yeah, wait, I just said dance. So I beg you, see that one? I'll fail. I'm telling you already. I did not say dance, I say job. I just mean on in my own music video. Maybe I'll have recorded my song, but see that dance part. I'm yes. sorry, my creativity does not get to that. I've tried my best, it did not work. Uh, okay. It only happens in my head. Okay, Portable has kept her doing big things. Uh, NPF. Who's living in the zoo now? Wild and out. That's replied wow. to Nick Cannon's show, Wild and Out. So yeah, that's a wrap. Thanks to everyone who made it such a very wonderful time. Thank you, Gabe, Tayo, Ajibade, Ali, Chris Momo. Thank you all so much. And James Silas, plug yeah, out. Yeah, thank you very much. James Silas is James Silas on social media. Um, if you touch me, I'm on Instagram, X, Facebook. I'm everywhere. If you reach out to me, tell me that. You listen to me on Grapevine now. Holla back. And thank you. See you on the next one. Peace.